Today is perhaps the happiest day of the year for me. President Dr. Tony Tan, SUTD Board of Trustees Chairman, Mr. Lee Seung Yang, graduates, families, friends, SUTD faculty, staff and students, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Class of 2016, as you can imagine, it gives me enormous pleasure to join you today as we celebrate your graduation from SUTD in the journey of learning, personal growth, fun, and enjoyment that you have experienced over the past few years. As I'm sure you would agree, your journey is, journey is one that you won't forget. Not quite like a vacation in Bali, but perhaps one that's filled with adventure, surprises, new friendships, fulfillment, and perhaps even a wee bit of stress. But nevertheless, here you are, having successfully completed a rigorous, very rigorous curriculum, and on your way to new experiences that hopefully will also be filled with adventure, surprises, new friendships, perhaps some occasional stresses, and hopefully much uh, fulfillment. There is much that I could say today, and much of that has already been said over and over again in thousands and thousands of graduation speeches around the world. Go change the world, be true to yourself, enjoy life, and so on and so on. All good, relevant advice that I won't repeat today, or perhaps more accurately, I will say in a different way. I entitle my remarks, Understand the world as it is, imagine what it could be. Understand yourself as you are, imagine what you could be. Perhaps there is no better example than Lee Kuan Yew, who saw Singapore as it was and imagined the development of a nation state like no other. I need not tell anyone in Singapore about what remarkable imagination, foresight, persistence, and courage it took for Mr. Lee to create the Singapore that we know and so much admire today. In the social arena, other iconic leaders have imagined new worlds. Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King saw social injustice and successfully pressed for change. In business, Alfred P. Sloan, Henry Ford, and more recently such luminaries as Michael Dell and Jeff Bezos saw commerce in new light and created the multi-divisional firm, the assembly line, and online delivery of goods and services. In technology, Thomas Edison saw a world illuminated by candles and kerosene, and Alexander Graham Bell saw a world of limited long-range communication, and they changed it forever. More recently, Bill Gates, Paul Allen, Steve Jobs saw a world of centralized mainframe computers and imagined desktop computing and computing in the hands of the masses. And of course, for the young people before me, examples would include entire new ways for people to connect with each other. Visionaries who created a world of communications and social networks, smartphones, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp. And I'm sure many other examples that are far beyond my old eyes and old ears. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that every one of you graduating today could or should be the next Jack Ma or Mark Zuckerberg. Of course, that would be great if it were. However, with your deep understanding of science and technology and your broad exposure to humanities, arts, and social sciences, you have the wherewithal to understand the world as it is, uh, as well, I believe, as the graduates of any university in the world. Moreover, you have expertise in design that permits you to imagine new worlds like no others. You are able to understand products that are available today and might say to yourself, I can design them better, or I can imagine something quite different in their place. You were able to understand business practices and processes and have the wherewithal to conceive of new approaches. You were able to understand systems for healthcare, finance, transportation, and national defense and create innovations that will improve them. You were able to understand the scientific, technological, and social underpinnings of the world and design innovations that will address some of society's most pressing challenges for a more sustainable environment, 
for smart cities, for security, and for the betterment of individuals who are in need and underserved. If you're all like me, you see the world differently today than when you did when you entered SUTD. You not only have learned approaches and methodologies for design, but you have imbued with design thinking. You have already used your acquired knowledge in technology design to identify human needs and develop innovative solutions. As examples, in the area of urban mobility, two of you, Jaron Lee and Brandon Chen, have developed a clever, affordable device, the so-called Freedom Electric Vehicle, which is a combined bicycle hoverboard and has the potential to significantly impact personalized urban transportation. Also, a group of nine of you has started a community-based smart bicycle sharing system called Zybike that aims to make the last mile commute easy and efficient. Both of these teams are on their ways to creating companies. Three of you, Li Zhang Xiang, Ti Mei Ying, and Jaron Li again, have developed an innovative home intelligence system. In 2015, it won the Merit Award at the World Engineering Summit, organized by the Institute of Engineers and the Science Center of Singapore. Nineteen of you have lit up Chinatown, developing yet another SUTD designed Chinese New Year light up that has warmed the hearts of Singapore community. In the arena of social innovation, five of you developed a dementia ward in Renzi Butak Buitak to enhance the quality of the environment for residents and staff, making the ward homey, improving its operational efficiency, and ultimately increasing users' happiness. These are but a few examples. I wish I could acknowledge each of your accomplishments today. Through these and many other innovative, award-winning projects, you have shown how to de design thinking can create a better world. Build upon these experiences and what you've learned. Bring design thinking into your everyday lives and bring it to the world. By doing so, you have the opportunity to imagine a new world and make a difference, either large or small, but a difference nonetheless. The first part of my talk was titled, Understand the World as it is, Imagine what it could be, is a twist on a famous quote of George Bernard Shaw that John Fitzgerald Kennedy and Robert Kennedy often used in political contexts, namely, some people see things as they are and say, why? I dream of things that never were and say, why not? There was a related quote that sometimes attributed to the Babylonian Talmud but whose source seems uh, tr uh, truly unknown. We don't see things as we are, we see, things, we see them as we are. This leads me to the second half of my title, Understand Yourself, uh, excuse me, Understand Yourself as You Are, Imagine What You Could Be. The world as we see it can be explained in part because of science and technology, in part because of social, political, and economic context but it is also affected by your own experiences, perceptions, and biases. You have yours, I have mine. As a result, as you try to understand the, uh, and change the world, try to understand how your own perceptions and biases might affect matters, might they lead you to a good or a poorly conceived design or innovation, might they lead to a good or poor relationships with family, with friends, or loved ones. I don't feel that I have especially good advice on these matters, nor will I try to suggest how design thinking might be of assistance in this regard. That would make for an interesting course or seminar, wouldn't it? However, I do believe that each of you is a different person leaving SUTD than you were entering, and I would encourage you to reflect upon that. Clearly, you have acquired much knowledge, but how else have you changed as a person? Have you been exposed to a diverse community of fellow students, faculty, and staff? Has it affected how you think or your worldviews? The social sciences have much to say about how we see things as we are. The noted sociologist Robert Merton tells us about self-fulfilling prophecies. Psychologists inform us about self-efficacy. And developmental psychologists about the important role of self-concept. If my self-concept comp comprises being good at mathematics, I am more likely to be a good mathematician. There is much to learn from these and other scholars in the social sciences, but there is also much to learn from your own experiences. Each of you will have your own story, how your education has affected or changed you, 
Let me share just a few examples from your fellow graduating students, each in their own words. Justin Lau from EPD. Up till junior college, life seemed pretty prescribed with a set route. I enrolled in SUTD's program as I believed it was close to my childhood passion, building things. However, like many people, I enrolled without a clue what engineering was. Was it under physics, chemistry, or maybe even biology? Its definition was like an enigma, and I cannot seem to put my mind on it. After national service, my first year at SUTD began, and boy, was it difficult. Sticking to my formula of doing my best in various subjects made me very miserable and exhausted because of the unnecessary self-inflicted pressure I put on myself. It was through my first summer at MIT that it made me realize that the end results do not really matter that much, and it's more about the process of progressing towards a goal that's the key. I learned this particularly through electric vehicle challenge. Even though we suffered many drawbacks, I still enjoyed the process of making it, as I knew we did our best. And I can clearly remember many funny and memorable moments that we had. With this new insight of focusing on the journey, I started my next year fresh and held on to this till even now, as I penned this post. This realization made my time at SUTD more enjoyable and led me to many opportunities. Through these experiences, I finally know that engineering means to me, and that is to give one's all to make the best of the situation at hand while keeping the ideal one in mind. Terry Ching from BPD. My journey of self-discovery was definitely not straightforward. I came from an aeronautical engineering background from my polytechnic days. When I came to SUTD, I thought that ESD was the pillar for me. But the multidisciplinary nature of our freshman year exposed me to a whole new world of knowledge and skills that changed my perception of the world, and also myself. I found my place in biological engineering. It has given me purpose and meaning that drives my passion. Jessamine Chua from ASD. Albeit fruitful and fulfilling, an internship before SUTD starkly narrowed my view, worldview of what architecture was. I entered SUTD aspiring to become an architect and no one other than that. I was biased and blinded by a pursuit for an ar of an architecture that was rigid and as narrow as a tightrope one that never truly spoke to me deep down. I thought I knew what architecture was all about until I stepped into SUTD. What is unique is that the project in SUTD never failed to revolve around people. Beyond the classroom, life-changing moments, namely the Global Leadership Program and Local Engagement and Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, the Ho Chi Minh Community Design, were where I started to discover my vision what architecture truly was to me, and my love for people, for inspiring, for engaging, and for empowering others. Architecture to me was no longer solely the design of buildings and projects in the skyline. Architecture presented a world of possibilities I never fathomed. Just as how SUTD has greatly impacted and empowered me, I dream of making a difference as well. Wow, wouldn't you say so? These are powerful statements. Justin, Terry, and Jessamine have been greatly impacted by their SUTD education. In their time here, they have managed to understand themselves better, take the initiative to hone their skills, and accumulate relevant experiences to work towards their aspirations. And they share the same vision as SUTD, to make a difference and better the world. I very much hope that each of you feels the same way as you've progressed and learned at SUTD. So have I. Take, today, I take another step forward. I have essentially no experience and knowledge of something that comes naturally to all of you, social networking. No Facebook, no Twitter, no WhatsApp. However, I'd like to share a parting congratulations in a form that's perhaps more comfortable to you than this lengthy speech. I'm going to try. This is fraught with the possibilities for error. Hold on. Come, come. I need my assistant here. <laughs> my, this is my teacher, by the way, my teacher.
Got it. Okay. Thank you, teacher. All right, so this is something called Instagram Live. Okay. 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 Okay.